Now, uh, John Ziegler uh, is a conservative radio host and recently he explained how other conservative pundits have been able to pretty much successfully destroy the press's uh, credibility in the eyes of conservatives. Now, leading, of course, uh, <clears throat> is uh, the charge of fake news, right? Now, fake news has been in the news a lot. It's ironically been picked up by the establishment in order to have someone other than Hillary Clinton to blame for losing to Donald Trump. Now, uh, there was a New York Times article uh, which basically uh, had a conversation between Zeigler and the uh, editor, um, and they talked about, again, uh, how people like Rush Limbaugh, Breitbart, Alex Jones are now basically reframing the term fake news. Now, they're doing so, of course, in order to say that anything that is hostile to their uh, extreme agenda shouldn't be listened to because it's fake. Oh, it's fake. It's fake news. It's fake news. Now, of course, uh, they're trying to point out some sources are actually legitimate sources as fake news instead of, of course, rather than uh, literally onion style fake news that was created to go viral for a purpose, right? For just to go viral. Now, we on the show, we've taken over, we've taken on fake news before. Now, for example, I've went after both parties, first the Democrats for blaming fake news for uh, Hillary's loss, but I've also taken on the purveyors of fake news from the right, uh, Alex Jones, Breitbart, okay? Uh, and also I've taken on Washington Post for publishing 16 negative articles on Bernie Sanders and uh, pushing uh, other things that were uh, false about Bernie Sanders, like, for example, on health care, uh, where they claimed that uh, Medicare for all, for example, single payer health care would actually destroy Obamacare. Not true. OK, so that's fake news. Right. The New York Times also did it in order to elevate Hillary Clinton. They spread fake news. I've done those stories. Now, the problem here is that, of course, fake news is everywhere and has always been a problem long before the election. In fact, it was a problem even back in the 1930s. Now, it only took the Democratic establishment taking a beating in this election for them to finally acknowledge it and want to do something about it. Of course, them doing something about it would actually make it worse. Their solutions to it um, are essentially creating what I like to call the ministry of, of, of truth, which is uh, not a good thing. Basically deciding what's fake news, what isn't fake news, and it's a governmental agency. It, it, that does concern me a lot. Uh, now, again, the problem with with everybody, both left and right, jumping on this fake news thing, is best summed up by uh, Jeremy Peters, who's the article, uh, who was the author of the article in the New York Times. He said, "Quote: By defining fake news so broadly and seeking to, di to dilute its meaning, they, mainly people like uh, Breitbart and Jones, are capitalizing the declining credibility of all purveyors of information. One product of the country's increasing political polarization." Now, uh, no, already, uh, I've laid out a lot of information, Ron, uh, on this uh, fake news thing. Do you have anything to say about it before I, before I go on? Well, first of all, let's not forget this. One of the main reasons that the corporate media is harping on fake news so much, quote-unquote fake news, is because this is an opportunity for them to really regain a lot of footing. I mean, I mean keep in mind... Trust in the corporate media uh, diminishes by the year. People are turning to more uh, non-traditional sources, stuff like the Young Turks. Um, and cable television news is a sinking Titanic. The corporate media, in many ways, the corporate news media is a sinking Titanic. Deservedly so. Right. Uh, this is an opportunity to try to regain some traction. Be like, oh, look at this fake news epidemic. Well, you need to stick with the trusted sources, which, of course, is CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News. That's the opportunity that they have. Yeah. That's why they're hammering this home. The, the blogosphere has been policing itself for a long time, and it continues to do so. Um, and fake news, I mean, I mean if we, we can even get historical here. Fake news... I mean, the media structure we used to have in this uh, country prior to the 20th century was one that was pretty much funded by government subsidies and were independent newspapers started by different schools of political thought mm -hmm. or just different groups. So there was crazy yellow journalism that used to exist back in the day. You can actually Google image some of the stuff that people used to publish. 
um, and they kind of police themselves. I'm not trying to uh, diminish the issue because, I mean, it's certainly an issue. It's certainly an issue when a deranged Alex Jones fan is showing up to a pizza shop and opening fire because of some uh, insane uh, story uh, that there was no relevant of truth to. Mm -hmm. uh, so it certainly is an issue, um, but you know, let let's not forget the, the corporate media uh, beating the drums of the fake news epidem epidemic. It's that's self interest, and mm -hmm. and you have to kind of see the difference there. And and I I think a lot of people who are paying attention do, and so and look, you know, they're at what. Uh, anywhere from six to sixteen percent, uh, you know, of Americans actually trust the news media, the corporate news media. Even though there's a, a lot of people actually do see the New York Times as more credible, and um, I'll I'll agree with them for the most part because there's a lot of good actual journalism going on uh, at the New York Times, and there's also bad journalism as well, um, and uh, and and certain and it, when it comes to the media. I don't think there's a liberal bias. I don't think there's a conservative bias. I think there is a an establishment bias, um, and of course, these media companies, being companies, being giant corporations, they're going to have more of an establishment bias, or, or I'm sorry, more of a conservative bias because what's conservative is less taxes, lower regulation, which is good for mm -hmm. these companies. But nonetheless, I still subscribe that they have an establishment bias because right now the establishment. Is good for them. Yeah, well, and they and they have a profiteering bias too. I mean, I mean, most well, that's what I mean by establishment. Have, yeah, well, I mean, right, but they they kind of go hand in hand. I mean, like like sure. for example, there were more negative Clinton stories than Trump stories. I mean, pretty much every every independent study kind of yeah. points to that. But that's yeah. because they wanted a horse race, yeah. and everybody thought she was going to win. So, uh, you know, when, when you want a horse race, you want to get it no matter what. You're going to try to uh, make it seem like a horse race no matter what. So that's why the, there were, uh, you know, most studies revealed there's more negative Clinton stories than Trump stories in the but election cycle. There, there was uh, and we one, could expect that any election. Right. There was one thing, though. Um, corporate media did not cover uh, the WikiLeaks stuff. Not nearly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I understand a lot of that is uh, negative Clinton stories. Right. Uh, and I think what they did is they focused a lot on Donald Trump. I mean, when you have CNN, that's basically showing an empty podium of Donald Trump instead of actually uh, a, a, another campaign rally or talking about or mentioning the WikiLeaks revelations and not claiming Russia, Russia, Russia uh, and showing, you know, Donna Brazile, for example, going on and claiming, well, you don't have actual evidence. I mean, they were stolen. They were stolen. They were stolen. So we're probably altered. OK, well, I, I have an issue with that. Okay, so I don't necessarily agree with 100% of what you said, but for the most part I do. But I had to point out I had to point out those examples that um I think later on in the game uh they actually did get a lot more negative on Donald Trump. But, yeah, I mean it's not all A or B. I mean, let's no, keep right. in mind that there's got to be a little bit. I mean, the media as it stands wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Hillary Clinton's husband. So, you know, I mean, th that's certainly uh, that's certainly a factor. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I think whenever I hear like, oh, it has a, a pro-Clinton tint or a pro-Trump Clinton, I, I, I don't agree with either one of those. I, I think it has a, a pro-profiteering tint. I think that that is, that is the first and foremost priority. Uh, is to make as much money as possible. That's why election coverage is terrible because it focuses on hyperbole and sensationalism instead of actual issues. And Bernie yeah. Sanders uh, complained about that left and right. right I mean, right. Bernie Sanders. I mean, there are clips uh, that you can find that are still up on YouTube where Bernie Sanders pretty much begs the media to actually do their job because and instead of talking about his platform, instead of talking about issues, uh, they're asking him why he doesn't get more flack for what his hair looks like. I, I mean, it is a it is a parody of itself at this point, and and part of the reason we have the issues we have with fake news is because at the highest level, the people in the media with the most resources are setting such a tragically low bar. Mm -hmm. And and look, when it comes to profiteering, who made them the most money during this election? I mean, as far as when it when it comes to coverage and ratings, mm -hmm. it was Donald Trump overwhelmingly. Right. What stupid thing is Donald Trump? going to say tomorrow 
Mm-hmm. What did he say earlier? What did he tweet? Okay. And instead of actually covering the issues. Now, I think a real issue was WikiLeaks because it actually showcased some of the corruption within one of the major political parties. That's kind of a big issue. Um, you know, especially if you care about corruption, um, which is a major thing. Now, it's a- another thing that the media tends to miss is, well, money and politics. Because they make a lot of money from that. Because they're getting the so, money. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it 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 there is that pro profiteering bias, and that's essentially establishment bias, um, to me, because the establishment is all about making as much money as possible, um, at the expense of actually doing a public service, which was, the, which is what 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 the press was supposed to do, uh, but since we've turned it into a business, that has become very very low on the list of priorities for these companies. I don't even think it's on the list of priorities. No. Now, there's more to this uh, article. And uh, this remember, this John Ziegler, very conservative uh, radio host, goes on um, to respond to a question of, hey, okay, so you, you've you uh, basically pointed out the problem. How do we fix this? Well, his answer is less than encouraging. He says, over the years, we've effectively brainwashed the core of our audience to distrust anything that they disagree with. And now it's gone too far. Now it's gone too far. (laughs) Because the gatekeepers have lost all credibility in the minds of consumers. I don't see how you reverse it. Now there's another issue that he brought up, of course, uh, in the piece was efforts to discredit fact check organizations. Like, for example, Snopes or factcheck.org. Uh, It notes that founder David Mickelson complained that he had been labeled as a partisan Democrat for merely highlighting false stories that happened to be uh, flattering towards conservative. Now, in conclusion, Ziegler uh, described how people will tend to flock to what they want to believe rather than the uncomfortable truth. Quote, we now live in this fragmented media world where you can block people you disagree with. You can only be exposed to stories that make you feel good about what you want to believe. Unfortunately, the truth is unpopular a lot. And a good fairy tale beats harsh truth every time. And that is essentially too true. This goes along with another radio host uh, that was on the conservative side that was essentially saying the same thing. I covered this months ago where he's like, we've created this right wing bubble. And there are so many people now that are engrossed in this giant bubble that don't that no longer believe in reality. And I understand that there are there are biases in progressive media. I certainly have my biases, and I make them known to everyone. Okay, I'm a progressive. This is what I believe. But that doesn't change the facts of a story. And the problem with the conservative side is that they do change or ignore the facts to suit their own narrative. And I'm afraid of the... the like, one of my biggest fears is, is progressive media doing the same thing. I'm, I haven't seen a lot of that. But it is one of the biggest fears because I don't want us to become what we hate. And why we go and, and we fight so much against corporate media. It's not that we hate the media, right, Ron? No, it's that we want the media to be better. We actually want right. to be Well, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, I don't hate the media. I, I hate the structure that exists. I, yeah. I mean, I think the structure is very tragically flawed. And, and that's, I mean, we, we can't really dive into all that. Uh, on this story. Uh, But, you know, I mean, I always say wanting to have a democracy and having the media structure set up the way we have it, that's like wanting to uh, have a gourmet restaurant and cooking exclusively with spam. It's just not going to work. Uh, We don't have a media structure that loans itself to democracy. We have a media structure that is grossly conflicted, that has conflict of interest 101, uh, and is kind of in bed with the powerful. Um, you know, you can't expect a, a media to hold the powers that be when they are part of the powers that be themselves. Right. And I, I think the point that that guy made are, are pretty much uh, absolutely right on in regards to people living in their bubbles. And there's so many different factors that happen. I mean, especially this election season. And, you know, I, I think it is happening on all sides of the aisle. I, I really do. I mean, there's a lot of people that just wanted to plug their ears with the whole, I mean, you brought up the WikiLeaks thing. There were a lot of people that just wanted to plug their ears and say that was just Russia. That was just Russia. Those were just Russian, Russia interference, Russia lies, Russian this, Russian that. 
Um, and even as that was unfolding, and we talked about it on this show, uh, we talked about it on the Jimmy Dore show, I, I think it would have been greatly beneficial for the Clinton campaign, too, to have talked about the information that was leaked instead of just playing this this Russian scare game. I mean, that whole right. kind of uh, nationalistic narrative, that doesn't work on the left as well as it works on the right. Um, but it has worked to some degree. I mean, there's a lot of people that, that I mean, anything that doesn't bring up uh, Russia's involvement, people will shut down to it. And then that's going on on the left, too. Um, you know, if you're including the, the more establishment Democrats as part of the left, at least. Um, so that is happening. I mean, people are uh, fearful of getting out of their bubbles. And, and I think the reality is, is that, that everybody... Uh, you know, everybody on all sides of, of, of the left kind of have a point here, and we kind of need to gel uh, on moving forward. And that's something that the right is quite good at. I, I mean, they, you yeah. know, the right was very good at, let's hear the Tea Party folks out, and let's hear the more old guard Republicans out, and let's tweak our platform some and win. They did that. They did that. They're good at that. Um, and, and that's kind of what needs to happen. But you do have a lot of uh, a lot of people staying in their bubbles right now, and I think a lot of that has to do with the sting is still very harsh uh, for a lot of different people. I, I do think that's part of that. Um, but uh, but I think that guy brings up some very good points, and I, I think it's going on on the right, uh, and I think it's going on on the left too. Yeah. And uh, look, <laughs> our job right here is to go and pop your fucking bubbles. So that's exactly what we're going to continue doing here on the show. So whether or not you've got that left wing, you know, uh, or uh, uh, left bias or right bias or whatever, and you're not dealing with facts, we're going to come. We're going to pop your bubble. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. Because I think that's what. The role of the media actually should be is to hold hold people accountable, and uh, to that, they have failed spectacularly with it. Oh, ab absolutely, man! And, and again, it's because of the structure. Uh, you know, it's a tragically flawed structure, yeah. and you know, I, I I think that for policy to change, people need to kind of demonstrate through their daily actions uh, that a status quo isn't working anymore. Mm -hmm. And I feel like people are doing that, and I think the rise of independent media uh, is a testament to that. But I, and that's why I think it's a wonderful thing that the Young Turks are hiring more reporters. They want to get more boots on the ground, because uh, I think boots on the ground is the solution for a lot of this stuff. That's why, you know, for years my favorite newscast has been Democracy Now, because uh, they are boots on the ground. They are doing right. their thing. Um, and they are kind of just telling the stories uh, from the ground, and that's what journalism uh, should be about, and that's the type of journalism that we need uh, if you want to have a healthy democracy. Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below, and if you want to support truly independent, non-corporate media, go to our Patreon page and become a patron, patreon.com slash TYTNation.